your journey into motherhood and this new life of family life kind of kept progressing and, and adapting because at six months, and I know that you and your Rex, you talked a lot throughout the journey of IVF about how things yeah. might change and how, you know, it feels like reading the book that there was such an open communication about yeah. that aspect of it, but things completely flipped on their head six months in. Yeah, I realised, and I think it was the point in which my ex realised that they were trans. And I think you can never un, like, reverse hack these things and work out what would have come first in another world. I think maybe the sort of hyper-gendered nature of IVF and a pregnancy and the language around it and the stereotypes that often accompany it I think they chipped away at my ex in a way that for however long they've managed to say to themselves, like, this isn't what's happening. This isn't who I am. This isn't who I am. I think, I mean, I should say, it's she. I, we use female pronouns yeah. now, she, but it's confusing until you've put that context in. We're, we're there now. Um, so we're at that part of the story. Yeah, she, yeah, I think I can't speak for her and I can't speak for the trans experience, but as I understand it, she'd tried every possible way to not be trans yeah. and the absolutely super hyper-gendered nature of parenthood in a, a, a point at which everyone was treating her as the dad was a sort of tipping point. And I think in a lot of ways, I realised it first and was begging her to sort of... You don't want to impose what you think is happening to someone on them in case it's not. Yeah. Um, so it was very delicate and terrifying series of conversations that had to go on between us because I knew that she was suffering enormously and she was the closest person to me in the world and was being an amazing parent and all of those things. But also I knew that I'm straight and I felt like it could detonate the marriage to say, look, is this what's going on? And in the end... I think we managed to discuss it together and got there together. And it was it was completely devastating because we both were really close, mm-hmm. committed parents. We'd gone through so much together and neither of us wanted to be separated. But also I couldn't ask her to not be trans any more than she could ask me to not be straight. Yeah. So we were at the end of the road that a marriage could go along. And it was totally devastating. But ultimately now, it's really positive because all that stuff we were talking about at the beginning about the IVF and all those moments where I was on the the other side of the natural way to do things really informed how I think about the trans experience now. And like IVF, 40 years ago, there were people protesting, there were arguments in Parliament, yeah. there were people saying that IVF was disgusting and against the natural way of things and meddling with nature and perverting the course of what should be. And the when you look at the conversation that was happening then, the parallels are absolutely incredible. And so I felt like, I mean, I'd taken some of the actual same drugs that trans women take now. Yeah to live what I perceive to be my best self and to be the me where I would be my, mo- you know, and it's, it's not the same wanting to be a mother to being trans, but there are undeniable and really powerful parallels, which really informed how I responded to it. I mean, there was anger <laughs> and there was frustration and there was a lot well, of pain. And, like... and there would, you know, <laughs> with any, with any divorce of, or breakup of any kind, there's a huge shift and there's got to be a time of adaptation yeah. and you know where do you put all of that all of those feelings within you yeah it was really difficult to work out where to put the pain and the rage and the confusion and the hormones because of all those things that had happened in such a small amount of time that I didn't want to be blaming things to do with an assault 
on who is then my spouse yeah. or vice versa yeah. and I didn't want to be saying that feelings I would have were having should be dismissed because of hormones but also I knew that I'd read all my baby books and all the blogs and the Instagrams and all and I knew hormones were also happening and so it took a really long time to sort of unravel everything but we did it. We're an amazing family now. And our way of parenting is in lots of ways easier Mm -hmm. than some people who are still trying to maintain a totally hot functioning (laughs) marital relationship as well. Because we've got all the stuff that is, you know, sometimes so challenging of like agreeing on parenting stuff and really deeply caring for each other. But there's like, this sort of amazing untethering from ego where it's like no one could really be to blame for this absolute quagmire that we ended up in. There could be responsibility and, you know, I could have done with some more information a bit sooner, admittedly. And at the time, you know, there were definitely dark, dark days where I felt like, oh, how convenient for you that I went through all this and the minute you got your baby. And I definitely did think those things in flashing, fleeting moments, but I definitely don't believe that truly was any kind of master plan. But there's got to be so many conflicted feelings because, uh, on the other hand, this is someone that you love and you want them to be themselves and and there must almost be, as well as everything else, a pride in them allowing themselves the freedom to kind of express who they are. Ultimately, where I landed, and I think... My mum took some convincing that this was where I'd landed. And I think she kept thinking she was really braced for a really long time that the real rage was yet to come. But I think she believes me now. Where I landed was that I'm really proud that in that context, we had a strong enough marriage and relationship, just as two human beings, that she was able to come out. Mm -hmm. Like, the thing that broke us as a husband and wife was the thing that made us as parents and humans. Because the freedom that you feel when you let go of trying to be a thing that you can't possibly be is so enormous that it's it's kind of dizzying. And the certain knowledge that I know nothing and that life can completely steamroll you when you least expect it has freed me up for the second half of my life to see things in a totally different way. 